nationalism beyond tribal sentiments. Just on Monday, some group of tra traditionalists stormed the premises of the great Obafemi Awolowo University to register their disapproval of the newly appointed vice chancellor. They claimed that an indigenous of Eleife should have been appointed. The big question is, what relevance is the tribal appellation of a vice chancellor to his ability to discharge his duty effectively? Why raising the academic standard? I wish those traditionalists could channel their energy and agitations towards ensuring adequate funding and support for the university or by extension, funding educational institutions. Now, this same issue is evident in the political and electioneering scene. In the wake of the forthcoming 2023 general elections, political parties, stakeholders, and the general masses somewhat seem to be very sensitive about tribal or ethnicity of the major players. It is true that inclusiveness is key in ensuring that every ethnic group is represented in the leadership. But beyond the satisfaction of several ethnic groups, is the importance of choosing the right persons for the greater good of the nation. Candidate selection should be judged based on value added and not on mere tribal or religious sentiments. In Africa, largely, sentimental reasons have, been, have often been the basis for selecting representatives for leadership as opposed to a fit candidate who can deliver true leadership as sometimes. This results in ethno-religious conflicts. Tribal religious and other sentimental driven reasons have led many to choose unfit persons in places of power. Political participation from the masses should start with a level of understanding that candidate selection is beyond sentimental biases. It should be solely dependent on evaluating candidates' agenda, past records, and also ability to communicate effectively with the people. Anything short of the aforementioned are governed by sentiments, which could plunge the nation to perpetual doom. Tribe and ethnicity is beautiful and should be a strength in our common identities as Nigerians. So let us think less of ethnicity or tribe and more of our common Nigerian nationality. Can I say, can I say, can I shake your hand please? <laughs> can I shake your hand? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, if, we, if we know our history, if we know our history, this will not be a problem. Why did I say that? In history, back in the days, about 50 to 100 years ago, the mayor of Enugu was an Aousa man. Mm. Now, yes, we don't know where we're coming from. And then we, we, um, we've been, the, the people in charge, political party leaders or so, for them to be relevant, once they lose power, once they're not relevant in that party or so, they go back to the villages or so and st start throwing ethnicity or religious um, confusion Divide for them. them to be relevant in, in be local ca champion. Yeah. We, you're right. When people ask me, they say, where are you from? I say, I'm a Nigerian. We need to go back to that and focus on being Nigerian first mm -hmm. and tribes and religious Second. Thank you for this. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, it's, it's a very important issue we discuss this because everybody's concerned and agitated. Who is going to be the president of Nigeria? Imagine what happened. How can people go to a university and say, we want, is it that we learn if fail uh, indigen perform the magic? Anybody can be vice chancellor. Anybody yes. should be vice chancellor in as much as you qualify for it. So I think it's not about tribe. Okay. It's about who accesses resources. Yes. Okay. So they're using the tribalism to make sure who they want to be there can access those resources. You know, we, we look at the universities, they're dilapidated, but they're being funded. There's, there are funds. Where yeah. are those funds going? So it's about who can access and siphon these funds into people's personal pockets and people's personal communities. And so they're not interested in actually putting someone viable there because it doesn't serve their purpose. 
It doesn't serve the purpose that they want. If people truly want the situation with universities, the government and general life to get better, we would be putting people in charge who are capable, who have the rights to be there, that they're properly experienced, certified, qualified, and have shown that they're invested in our nation. Yeah. But that isn't why people go into politics. That isn't why people go into being chancellors of universities. That there's, that's just not how it happens. So I think we're honestly fooling ourselves today to think, it's very nice what you said. It's lovely, but Nanaija we did. So let's look at what's... We'll make it happen. <laughs> no, okay, you're, 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 you're right. What do you see about putting square peg in square holes? Put round pegs in round holes. Forget about tribe and so we need a good person to lead us or good leaders in respect of work. So what do you think? I'm not going to say that I'm going to have a good in this situation. <laughs> I'm going to say two very big words. One, um, still waters run deep. Mm -hmm. Two, tribalism, the bane of my country. It's not something we can just set aside, you see. We have to be very careful in saying that, oh, yeah, let us be nationalism above tribalism. We are, you guys have all made very salient points. Um, Tony has brought up the issue of um, resource management and that how, how that is the springboard to the decision that is being made. And um, Elijah has said that, oh, what about the intellectual capacity of the individual being discussed? Abdul has said we need to continue to discuss all of these matters. Brilliant points. I completely agree. However, we have to conceptualize it. In Nigeria as it is, there are several issues with people saying, oh, I've been marginalized, I've not been given the right, um, and the right attention, my people do not sit at the center, we do not have access to the, um, to the control, we don't have access to, to power, we don't have access to control resources. So when the people begin to advocate and agitate about some um, tribalism and positions and appointments in Nigeria, we have to be very careful before we just throw out and say, oh, nationalism above all else. So on that matter, for OAU, I'm going to ask two questions. Is there an indigenous person that can also fit into this position? And the answer is yes. Why wasn't it considered? All right? Now we have brought somebody from, say, for another community, another part of Nigeria. Why can't we work with that person? I'm going to be very careful and say, don't just say, oh, nationalism. Because I'm from Lagos State, and I hold it with pride. If you want to come and govern in Lagos State, the question I'm going to ask you first, before you bring an Aousa man, have you considered the locals? We preach diversity on an international level. We preach inclusion on a national level. We must also recognize that there are minority ethnical groups and the minority tribes that are not given the same access to the center. And so the study who comes to equity must come with clean hands. And that's where I'm going to rest my point. <laughs> but what do you, when you say local, I'm going to ask you a question. Somebody, let me give you an example. You get back to a child in Lagos, even though the parents are not Yorubas. Let's say the parents are, perhaps, let me use Ibus, for example. And you get back to a child in Lagos. You decide to name your child Chukwebuka Lawan, kind of. Um, that child has the right to claim Lagos as, yeah. It's an indigenous course, Lagos. Absolutely. You should grow up, even if you relocate to any part of the uh, country, you should stay, if you stay more than 10 years there, you should be able to run for political office. Yeah, good luck uh, But uh, I, I think we need to be educated more yeah, as Nigerians. That's not happening right now. We, we should have <laughs> well, a balance between tribalism and nationalism. Yeah, yeah, why do we respect all tribes, but the our nationalism... Well, I mean, that's the problem. Our, 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 our state yeah, of that, origin. That, that, that's the, that's of the problem. Origin that's the problem. Maybe we have to remove that. They have to remove state, state of origin. Of origin. They need, state they of need origin. to remove state yeah. and put okay, state of residence. State of residence. If they do that, yeah. that will go a long, yeah, a, a long way. I think yeah. we have because to rethink this. We have to rethink Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but, uh, first. but as Tonya said, listen, the biggest problem we have, the biggest problem, as Tonya said, the biggest problem, this is Nigeria now. Why? Look at the people who are meant to be making the, um, making the laws in the Senate, in the House of Rep. They will not do anything unless somebody gives them something. That's the problem. Allegedly. We'll keep fighting. Allegedly. I, yes, what, what she said. <laughs> thank you very much. Well done, Let's guys. put thank Nigeria you. face. <laughs> we thank you for your attention while the program lasted. We hoped our conversations resonated with you and that in some small way encouraged you to contribute to your immediate environment. 
Little drops of water, they say, makes a mighty ocean. Don't forget, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Join us next week, same time, on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. See you next time. Bye.